Welcome to Reds. I'm Redheaded Riding Hood, Red for short. Oh, the dove is up. No, it's Robin. Hi, Robin. There's a Robin on the roof now. Um, okay. It's Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo. I'm reading this one again. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, 34. There is a legend about the last day on earth, the judgment day that scripture tells about. In heaven, on this final day, everyone is joyfully celebrating, singing, dancing, and embracing their loved ones. Everyone is jubilant except Jesus, who is standing sadly at the gates to heaven, looking down and beyond. He is asked why he is not joining in the festivities and joy all around him. Jesus answered, I am waiting for Judas. The power of the story should touch the heart of every person in recovery. God in Christ is such pure, forgiving love that he yearns to embrace his betrayer. All his followers let him down and were restored to fellowship with Christ. The same reunion awaits Judas. I'll, I'm going to say more on this later, but I think it's already happened, actually. But I'm going to say more at the end of this. Each of us has sold out Christ many times in many ways. Only the self-righteous and proud among us could deny our guilt. We have, we all have some Judas in us, yet we are always welcome, even at the last day. What is good news to us is that Jesus await, waits for us and will embrace us when we return. What is bad news is we have to choose. We have to move toward him. Of course, he will help us return, but he refuses to pull us into heaven. We make that journey by our own choice. We don't have to walk alone or even trudge along without assistance. But we do have to decide that's the way we'll head. Once that's decided, we'll get there. That's how the 12 steps works. They are a sure and steady stairway to heaven as well. But we have to walk them and we travel hand in hand with many other pilgrims. My blessed Lord, receive me and draw me up to you. I choose to be with you forever. Amen. Okay. I want to say something about Judas. Because before my little <laughs> prodigal stint, I say my dark night of the soul, and then I walked away from God. Um, I've said before, <laughs> it was similar to, um, and, I, and, I, and I saw that and watched it on, because I was behind on the episodes on Grey's Anatomy. I, my sister-in-law got me into Grey's Anatomy, and I related so to the Christian character with the red hair, April Kepner. I so related to her and connected with her and it was even after I, I, I walked away from God that I saw the episode Your Own Personal Jesus, I think it is. I will put a link to the, the little clip below, but <laughs> I just, I watched it like, are you kidding me? Because it was, it was very, you know, of course I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but she gets mad at God and she walks away. And I, I just, it was just stunning. It was like art imitating life, a life imitating art. But anyways, um, that was before that I had studied the Bibles for years and was a Christian for 30 years and studied the Bible a lot and was very intrigued with the 
the subject, was in the church for 30 years also. I was Presbyterian. I grew up Presbyterian. And then in Georgia, um, I was we were married in Presbyterian, conservative Presbyterian church in, in Boca Raton. And then we started going to a conservative Presbyterian church in um, Warner Robins, Georgia. And then we started going to a Baptist church. Um, and then we were at Baptist church, Baptist churches for the past, you know, 30 years. We, yeah, we, 30 years because my oldest son is 30 and he was, uh, we had him and we had moved into, um, our first house, the house that I sold in 2020. <laughs> and anyways, backstory. But anyways, I've been studying the Bible for a long time and was always intrigued with Judas and it might be that I was, one time when I was reading about Jesus washing the disciples' feet, and it dawned on me, he washed Judas's feet. And then when I was thinking more about, um, you know, because people always assume that he he was was lost. And I don't know where it came from, but, and I feel like it was a wrong teaching. And I was very into studying out, you know, we're right, the Baptists are right, and you all are wrong. <laughs> you know, um, I don't, I don't really feel that way anyway, but I do feel like it was a wrong teaching in the Catholic Church that they had us teaching that suicide was the unpardonable sin. And maybe some of that was from that Judas killed himself. But before Judas killed himself, if you read in the scripture, he felt badly. He felt sorry. He repented. He even turned the, returned the money that he was given by the priest to betray Jesus. He returned that money to them, threw it at their feet, and then he went and hung himself. Well, I surmise, and nobody knows, that he went to heaven. And so where it says in here that he embraced Judas, you know, he's not awaiting. The Bible says absence from the body is presence with the Lord. You know, I feel like he got that embrace from, from Jesus. And I want, I've been wanting to tell a story, and since it is, see my nails, <laughs> Mental Health Awareness Month, I want to talk more about this. Because um, I feel like, you know, because even my mom was influenced by this. So years ago, I was, you know, very conservative and getting involved in everything in the Baptist church. And one thing, too, that my mom and I would bump heads on is the subject of... I'm getting controversial here. <laughs> Abortion. And because she was a more liberal um, Christian and she was a, a Democrat and I was a conservative Christian and Baptist and I got very involved with a crisis pregnancy center in Macon, Georgia. And years ago... I don't know what, I can't remember what year it was. I think it was 92, because I think it was right around the time my son was born. It was 92, maybe. I don't know what year it was, but it was around that time. It was in the early 90s. Um... the leader of this crisis pregnancy center took his own life. I didn't know him that well, but I had volunteered at the crisis pregnancy center. I didn't really know him that well at all. Um, but it was very sad. And um, because of that, um, he had a, lo a large family. He had like six kids. But, um, and also later on, it was after that, the, the church where I went to 
in Warner Robins had this very charismatic pastor before we were there. Like I had never even, never even met him. I knew his, not his daughter. I met his daughter before, but, and his daughter still went to that church. Um, but they like idolized this man. He was awesome. This pastor of this church in Warner Robins, the people in Warner Robins probably will know people who have been in Warner Robins many years anyways, would know who I'm talking about. But also this pastor of this church took his own life. And it was one, it was around the same time. And because of those things happening, um, Uh, and because of all of the, the things surrounding the, you know, the S word, <laughs> you know, I, I heard that on YouTube that the Judds are being criticized for not using that, not just coming out and saying the S word. That's their business. I mean, they came out with that press release like right after she passed and, you know, they said she died of mental illness. And that, that is the way I feel like we should look at it. You know, this person died of cancer. It's a, it's also physical. It's a physical thing too, you know? So this person died of mental illness. That's a good way to put it. Um, and don't say they, they committed something like they committed a crime. They didn't commit a crime. I mean, I know it is against the law, but they didn't commit a crime. I mean, don't say it that way, but anyways. Um, so anyways, because of these things happening, I think those two things, um, my mom and I got it in, in an argument because my mom feels very strongly about that. And she, she, um, we were arguing about the other issue. And, um, so we got in a disagreement and she was like, well, how could someone, you know, if, if someone does that, you know, and the two had nothing to do with each other, but we got into an argument about that. But then, but that's beside the point. Um, but then this pastor, and this was a controversial pastor, a new pastor at the Baptist church we were at in Warner Robins, um, gave a sermon and it was very good on, you know, on suicide and that someone had came to him um either probably about the former pastor or the leader of the the crisis pregnancy center you know is how can a christian how can a christian do that um and he gave a very good sermon and he says you know sometimes the christians might be the most likely to do that um and then he said he mentioned um samson in the bible who made the the whole tower fall on him that Samson's in Faith's Hall of Fame in chapter 11 of Hebrews and Samson committed suicide so <clears throat> it is a wrong thing because of the Catholic Church the way they're like you have to say the last rites and blah 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 and then you know and I don't, you know, I, don't, I think that's a wrong teaching. And I feel like some things, and, and I feel a certain way about the teaching of hell now. I feel a certain way. I feel like you shouldn't be motivated, that, that God wouldn't motivate you by fear, doesn't want to, he he's motivates you by love. He, he draws you to himself by love. He doesn't say, do this so you don't go to hell or do this yeah, or, or don't do that so you don't go to hell. Because I feel like, in a way, the Catholic Church was being manipulative. It's like, okay, we tell them this is the unpardonable sin, they admit, so they won't do it, you know? And so this pastor did was, you know, taking a chance, being like, it's okay, you know? He's like, Christians that do that, they go to heaven, yeah. So... But, um, yeah, that's my little thing on that. But I don't, I don't feel like God doesn't want us to motiv be motivated by fear. And, um, and, 
and it's not, you know, and, you know, I'm taking a chance doing this too, but <laughs> there's help. There's way to get, to get help. I mean, don't do it. I feel like they can still, I feel like Judas went to heaven. I'm sorry, but I do, you know, and they, you, you can disagree with me. I can't, I can't prove that, you know. I can't prove that either. I feel like my, um, as some of you know, my, um, my family had a lot of dysfunctions, you know. I was talking to my son when I was in Denver. I guess it was this past June. It's like I'm going to, in June again, probably. I, well, the end of this month or June, I'm excited. I'm going to Denver. But I was talking to my son and he was saying like, he was like, there's a lot of sad stories in your family. And there are. And, um, you know, one of the verses I had was um, where Jesus raises up Ma uh, Mary and Martha's brother, Lazarus, from the dead. And, um, I called into the Christian radio. I told the story before about how Christian radio got me off the soap operas. So I called in, there was a contest on Christian radio and the question was, what did, what did Martha say when Jesus said to roll away the stone from in front of Lazarus's tomb? And I called in and, and I got the, I got through and I said, she said he, he by this time he stinks. He's been dead four days. <laughs> By this time, he's gonna stink. <laughs> she didn't have a, oh, you of little faith, Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha. Um, and so I won. <laughs> I won a, a little a Christian CD, a Christian children's CD, which was good because I had a lot of little, little Christian kids <laughs> that I was busy brainwashing. Um, so yeah, I won that. And, and afterwards I was thinking and I was like, I, I started weeping and praying for my brothers because I was like, I started weeping and crying. I said, this, they've been dead a long time, Lord. Their, their lives are, I knew their lives weren't, their lives stink. I mean, this was before any of them were, were dead. <laughs> then they started, I mean, I got to the point, like, <laughs> after my, my mom had passed, my dad had some crazy woman move in with him, and my sister called me bawling and boo-hooing about it. And I was like, I was just like, don't do, I was like, oh my gosh, he's, he, you know, who died? Who died now? You know, because then at that time my, my mom had passed away. Um, before my mom passed away, I had lost three of my brothers and my cousin. And let's see. Yeah, my mom passed away in 2009 and this was 2010. It might have been, I think, 2010 or 11, my, my uncle died. And so at this time she called me. I, that's what was my first thought, well, who died now? But um, so I was telling you all this story to say that in 2006, it wasn't clearly evident. And, I, and it would have, I don't know how it could have been any worse for my mother, but my mom had lost my brother Paul in 2002, my mom and dad had lost my brother Paul in 2002 and he was, he was in prison too. And then my brother Tim in 2005 and he was a heroin addict. And then my brother Mark six months after my brother Tim passed away and he had checked himself into a hospital a state hospital, which he took, checked himself into when he was having suicidal thoughts. But we didn't know, and they didn't, they couldn't really tell what 
he died from, but he was very overweight. He was, he was like 6'4". He was 300 pounds, and he lived in his car. But he was a um, security officer. His boss at my mom, these beautiful flowers. It was really sweet, my, my mom and dad. But they, they were just devastated. But, um, as was I. And it was um, the end of March, it was almost April, and I had a calendar with scriptures on it. And Mark was a very quiet person, but he was raised in the church like, like we all were, you know, and um, I knew he didn't go to church now, but I didn't really, I didn't really know what he believed, but we were just, you know, sad, really sad. And I, I turned over my calendar and there was the scripture, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes me, though he die, yet shall he live. And that's what Jesus said to Martha in those scriptures. So, um, I knew and I choose to believe that he's, he's with Jesus and he's, he's with, you know, my mom and dad, and my other brothers. That's all.